see the dash. We're warming up the bike up to 55 degrees, 13 degrees outside. Oh, this is absolutely sick, boys. And their shift light comes on. That's so dope. Beauty dream. <laughs> That's sick. That's so sick. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to the channel for today's video. And today we're gonna to show you how to install a digital dash to your dirt bike. Now, as you guys can see here, we've gone and picked up the Trail Tech Vapor Digital Dash Display. And this thing's an absolute unit. You can see here is everything it comes with in the box. So over here, we have a power wire. Here we have our tack ignition sensor. Then we have our temperature sensor, as well as a wheel speed sensor. Then it comes with your magnet for the wheel speed sensor. And it comes with two different brackets to mount to two different Different size of handlebars and then we have the unit itself which is cool because it also has a battery inside of its own so you can use this digital dash even if your dirt bike is turned off now this thing is normally powered by the dirt bike and its dirt bikes battery but it does have its own internal battery so you can check around and play with the settings and stuff when the dirt bikes not even turned on now what's cool with these trail tech digital dashes is they can pretty much be installed onto any dirt bike now this vapor digital dash is super cool it shows you your speed your rpm your engine temp the external ambient temperature your your distance, your ride time, a stopwatch, a shift light indicator, a two-stage shift light indicator, an odometer, your maximum ride time, your maximum speed, your maximum RPM, and a whole bunch of other cool features. So let's go ahead, let's jump into setting up the screen, and then we're gonna go ahead and start installing it on the dirt bike. Now to start the setup on the Vapor Digital Dash itself, we're gonna take the three different buttons. So we have the down arrow, the mode button, and the up arrow, and we're gonna press all three of them at the same time. I'm gonna press and hold, we'll see it zero out. And now this is gonna set up the whole screen on exactly how you're gonna want it. So we're gonna want it here into kilometers an hour. So go ahead. So we're just gonna click mode because that's what we want. Now this is gonna be asking here is gonna be looking for your tire size. So it wants your tire size in millimeters. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you how we measure our tire size so it can accurately read our speedo. So now we're simply gonna take our tape measure. We're gonna go down to the ground and we are gonna measure up to the top of the tire. All right, now that we know it's 660 millimeters, we're gonna take that number and we're gonna multiply it by 3.14. And that's our tire size in millimeters, 2,072. So here's our number that we need to input into the vapor to get our appropriate tire size to match the speedometer. All right, now we've got our tire size set up correctly. We'll hit mode and go on to the next screen. Now it's gonna ask you what you want your clock. If you want a 12 hour or 24 hour clock, we wanna pull a 12 hour clock. Next, it's gonna ask us for the time of day. So go ahead and we'll set the time of day here. Now it's gonna be asking your pulses per revolution. Now our pulse per revolution is gonna be one. Pulse change level is gonna remain zero. And we can change our temperature up here for Fahrenheit or Celsius. And we can set what is our high temperature indicator. You can set your danger level for your temperature. You can set your shift lights as well. And then your second shift light as well. And then you have it all set up. And then we can go ahead and start installation on the dirt bike. We've clicked it up onto the handlebars here. We've got the long Allen screw down in here to mount it. And the short one is the one that uses as a pinch bolt on the bracket itself. So we're just going ahead. I got to pull off my bark busters here. So I can go ahead and slide this down here. And then this will sit just over top of my face pad here. All right, as you can see, we got our dash nice and mounted. That thing is super sturdy. We'll go ahead and pull off the screen protector. Boom, this thing looking fresh my boy and that thing is super duper sturdy that ain't going nowhere you can press all the buttons really easily it doesn't shake it's got a really nice sturdy mount i really do like that and there's that guy installed up on the handlebar so now it's going through and to actually wire up all the plugs that we got on here uh, so we can get this thing running and ripping just right it's coming out absolutely sick love how it looks and uh yeah mounts super sturdy all right so now that that's hard mounted on the handlebars we're gonna go ahead and install the first one which is our temperature sensor which is actually going to read how hot the engine is running now, as you guys can see here by the diagram we're going to end up pulling our spark plug out we're going to remove the crush washer and we're going to Install this aftermarket guy here as a replacement for the crush washer and this is going to be what reads the engine temperature now we're just going to start by pulling our spark plug boot and just pull that guy up off the socket now we're going to go ahead and remove the spark plug itself with a spark plug socket now that we've got our spark plug removed to remove the little washer here which is this guy right here at the end of it all we're going to do is grab it and we're going to thread it off the end of the spark plug just by twisting the spark plug like so. And that guy will wind up and off. Just be careful not to mess the thread ups. So we're just gonna go back and forth, make sure it comes off nice and easy. This might take a little bit of finessing as the spark plug threads get a little gooped up. All right, and just like that, our washer can come off. Now we're gonna take our new temperature sensor here and we're gonna stick that over the spark plug like so. And then we're gonna stick this back into the engine just like this. All right, and just like that, we've got her plugged in down there into the spark plug. And that just is being routed up the same way that the, that the ignition coil is ran and it comes up around the handlebars and then ends up plugging into the other half of the harness 
right here. So now that's all plugged in for our temperature sensor. Let's go over and we're gonna hop into the next step. Now, if you were to have a liquid cooled bike, you're not gonna have the spark plug O-ring and you're gonna either have a fin that goes inside the radiator fins or you're gonna have one that, that goes in the middle of the radiator hose to read the coolant temperature as shown in this example here and an example here. We have this one here that goes onto our spark plug, but you could have one that goes into the radiator fins or one that goes onto the radiator hose. Now, whatever bike you end up purchasing this kit for will come with the required pieces that you need so you can actually read the temperature accurately depending on whether your bike's air-cooled or liquid-cooled. So now we're gonna jump to the next step and install our power wire that actually powers the unit when the bike's running. Now, it's recommended that you use one of these fusible links in case you were to short out the wire and have a fire issue is that this fuse link here and this fuse would pop before you have any sort of fire. So we're going to go ahead and quickly remove these plastics so we can properly run the line down where the frame uh, currently has all the rest of its power wires going so everything's nice and neat and tidy and you can't end up pinching off the line and causing a short. So let's go ahead YouTube magic and let's just pop the plastics off here like so. Boom, just like that, we got our plastics off and I might just pull the gas tank off because we can see that there is a little tiny tab down in here where the electrical runs and there's one more hidden up in here that I also wanna run in so the line is super nicely ran. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull this gas tank off like so. Boom, just like that, we got our gas tank off. Now you guys can see the clip I was talking about down in here. So we're gonna use this one. There's another one down there. There's another one right here. And this is what we're gonna use to run our power line. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and get that all laid out. Then we gotta go ahead and attach this fusible link we got here. Now this is one thing that does not come included with the kit. You're gonna have to go ahead and pick one of these up. These are super cheap, they're like three or four bucks. Uh, and then we're gonna have to cut this end off and re-solder on the correct ending here that can go onto our battery terminal because this one's a little bit too big for what we got. So we'll and we'll cut this down, put a smaller one on it, attach this side to the power wire that we have here, attach that to this side here. As you guys can see, there's a red and a black wire. So obviously the red one, we're gonna go ahead and connect to this fusible link wire that's gonna go to our power. And then the black one, we're just gonna put to a ground on the ground side of the battery. All right, now we've got our wire here, it runs down, around, goes through this front little clip here, it comes down, it goes through our rubber clip that we have just like OEM comes into our next clip like OEM, the next clip like OEM, comes down under, we got another clip here that it goes into, follows the rest of the exact OEM wiring, comes into this clip here, and now we've got our two lead ends out here that are gonna go to the battery. But first, we're gonna need to go ahead and insert that fusible link. So here we've got our fusible link. To get this to the correct size terminal that we need, all we're gonna do is we're gonna start, just go ahead and we're gonna chop this guy off just like so. Boom, and now we're gonna get our wire strippers and we're gonna peel back the sheath that's on the outside of this wire. Stick it in here and clamp these down and then pull away. And then all we're left with are these exposed wires. Now we've got a packet of these heat shrink wire connectors. We'll open this guy up. One of these guys, this should still fit the bolt. No problem. The wire should fit in this one much, much easier. It's a little bit larger inside of this yellow plug. Go ahead and stick this inside the buck connector. Just like that, goes right on in, no problem. We just shove it all the way in. We're gonna grab our crimps. Go ahead, we'll stick it on the yellow crimp crusher, yellow for yellow, and we're just going to crush. We give it a little tug, it doesn't move, there's no play in that one. Now we're gonna get a lighter and we're gonna heat shrink the wrap around it so it's got a nice watertight seal on this guy here. And we're just gonna heat it up and this guy's gonna shrink around the wire. We'll have a nice tight fit. Now this guy is not going nowhere and we got a new joint side on this of the fusible link. Now on the other side, we need to just join this to a direct wire, which is the power wire that's off of what we just ran. Go ahead, we're gonna give this a snip. Now, because we have such a thick gauge wire here in our hands that we're gonna be trying to connect to one that's super tiny and thin, we're gonna have to grab. Now we know the yellow one fits onto this guy, but the yellow one is quite too large to be able to fit this single wire. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna strip this wire back and we're gonna fold it over on itself so it becomes twice as thick so we can sit it on this guy in here. So I'm gonna head, I'm just gonna clean this guy up and I'll show you over on the bike the other half. Now you guys should be able to see we've let a, quite a big chunk of the wire out and now we're just gonna take it and I'm just gonna fold it back over on itself. And it's gonna give us double the thickness of wire. It's like so. So now we've got our fusible link with our extended piece here. The other connector that I showed you guys how to install here. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this wire that we've now doubled up part a bit more and that guy's gonna go inside of there and then get crushed and then we're gonna wrap this guy up. 
So now that we got our power wire all done, this side's all done and ready to connect onto our battery, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take our ground wire and we're gonna put a little one of these guys here so we can go ahead and connect it to the negative terminals. All right, so that took a bit of finagling, but as you can see, it's all in there. It looks like OEM fresh, it looks really, really good. We just went and made sure we put some electrical tape along the entire wire line as I just didn't feel comfortable just putting in a bare wire with nothing around it rubbing against metal, considering it is a positive hot wire. So we just wrapped it with some electrical wire and uh, yeah, that's on there. So now we're gonna be jumping over and and doing the next part of installing the digital dash, which is absolutely sick. Super stoked on how it's coming out so far. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the RPM gauge. So we're gonna go ahead and install this one. Now this one's super duper easy to install. All we gotta do is just like an hour meter on a bike is you just have to run it around the coil pack here. So that's super easy. All we're gonna do is use this little red wire that's left and that's gonna get run around the coil and that's it. That's all there's to the RPM. So let's go ahead. We're gonna plug it in up there. Probably end up cutting and shortening this wire some cause it's really, really long. And then we're just gonna go ahead and stick it on there. And then we'll have our RPM and tack gauge all set up. So let's go ahead and let's just go ahead and stick that on. So here we have our sensor. This is the sensor itself. And this is gonna go down onto our front fork. We got our magnet here in the bag and this is gonna go on and replace one of your brake caliper bolts. So every time that the wheel goes and rolls past it, that's what's gonna be counting your speed on the bike. We'll be off the front tire. So as you guys can see here, we got three different bolts. So we're gonna figure out which one of these bolts will go in and replace the rotor bolt here. Now, if one of these didn't fit it also comes with this little magnet in here, the pink one. You got this pink magnet here and that'll actually, if you drill into your rotor, you can place this pink magnet into your rotor. Uh, and there's a little tiny snap ring that's in there as well. And that's what's gonna be the magnet that reads on the speed sensor. But I'm pretty sure one of these three bolts fits onto our KLX. So let's go ahead and see which one of these bolts can replace the one that's in the brake rotor and make sure when you put it in that you use some blue Loctite on it since this is a spinning part. And you definitely don't want this coming out because it'll be kind of a pain in the butt to try and find one of these. But you as you can see, they're all magnetic. So yeah, let's go ahead and we'll stick one of these bolts in and see which one fits. All right, so we got our original bolt out. We got our magnetic bolt here for the Speedo. Got some of this blue Loctite here. And then we're gonna put some of this on the thread. We'll stick that in. And then what's important to note is that the sensor here, now I've just got it taped up for a temporary uh, to see if it's gonna be at the right angle or right line or not, or if it needs to come down lower or not. But it says it wants the bottom of the sensor here to be lined up with the middle of the magnetic bolt that we're gonna be using. So I'm just gonna kind of guesstimate. We'll see how it is. We'll put the front tire up in the air, spin it, see if it reads the speed up on the speedo. All right, we got the sensor line. That's just loose. He ran up here. It's all plugged in. So go ahead, we'll spin the tire and let's see if our uh, speedo reads some speed. So let's go ahead, we'll give her a spin here. Give her a spin, would you look at that? She's reading KM an hour, boys. Hell yeah, boys. So now we got a freaking speedo working. It's all seems to be working so far. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna slap everything together, tighten it up, button it up, make it all look sweet, nice and flush, zip tie it all up so it's all tucked away, hidden away. We'll go ahead, we'll stick the gas tank and all the plastics back on. We'll open up the garage, stick the GoPro on, and let's just go for a little rip down the street and see if it works or not. Let's figure it out. All right, let's take a peek at it and see if this thing works, boys. So we got our dash up here on the cluster. We'll start it up. We can see our tack is working beautifully. That's awesome. Uh, what else do we got to test? We got uh, the air temperature outside, 16. We can see the bike sitting at 24 degrees. Let's see if it warms up. Oh yeah, instantly we're getting up 26 degrees, 28 degrees. Tack works cool. 29 degrees, we'll go for a little bit here. Speedo's working. Yes, boys. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, our little sh shift light works. <laughs> that's sick. That's awesome. See the dash? We're warming up the bike up to 55 degrees. You can see our max that we went was 30. 13 degrees outside. Oh, this is absolutely sick, boys. Their shift light comes on. That's so dope. Oh, absolute beauty dream, boys. Beauty dream. <laughs> That's sick. That's so sick. That's sick. Wow, this thing revs to 10,000 RPM. That's so awesome, boys. Bike 76 degrees. RPM, it shows your exact RPM there. So 
So what's our RPM? Our, our idle is around 12 to 1400, 14, 1500. Oh man. Well, I'm absolutely super, super, super stoked on that product. If you guys want to check out one of these digital dashes, they'll be linked down in the description. Just make sure you choose the right one for your bike as they are bike specific. It's a generalized unit, but they come with different handlebar mounts and different mounts for if you're liquid cooled, air cooled, and a bunch of other stuff. So make sure you go down below, click like if you guys enjoyed this video, click subscribe if you want to see more. We've got a banger bunch of videos coming out with KLX and this new sweet unit. So make sure you guys stay tuned for the next one and I'll see you later. Peace out.